do Friday Fun Live, but on a Saturday this time, we had to schedule around a family issue. So um, everything is fine. Just um, thank you for flexing with me this week. And um, hope you're having a wonderful weekend or a good start to one. I am here. I've done a lot of, or a little bit of yarn shopping. Um, not really planned, but um, I have a lot of fun things to show you. But before we do that, I just want to say hi to some of you guys. I've got a lot of nice nice folks here in the chat. I just want to say hey to Kelly in Tucson, um, Lupita, Buenos Dias in um, Chihuahua, Mexico. And um, thank you for your enthusiasm, Kelly. Um, and Marie, it's good to see you, my friend. And um, Maria from Virginia and Charlotte and Lauren. And let's see, um, Archer Nace, hey there, from Cleveland. And uh, Pat from Texas. And um, Kelly says she's crocheting a Trinity Bible cover. How cool is that? Um, yeah, and the friend has a cross on it. Fantastic. I would love to send see the picture of that if you ever want to send it to me. You can either post on my Facebook page, on my Bonnie Bay Crochet Facebook page directly, or you can just send it to me. Emails in the video description below. Um, but if you need it, it's just simply bonniebay at me.com, and I will get that picture. Um, and Lauren says she's got a misbehaving toddler. I think that kind of goes hand in hand. <laughs> Um, so I hope, I hope you can, can watch some and, and maybe the toddler can learn to crochet. Who knows? <laughs> um, let's see. Archer Nace says she's still working on the winter cable throw. Uh, I hope you get that worked out. If you have any questions on that, just send them to me, please. And we have, um, Johnny, uh, my friend in Fort Lauderdale-ish, Florida. So good to see you there, Johnny. And, um, Janet Lowe. I love to craft is in the chat. Um, Regine, um, let's see, we have Pat Dancer and Helen, and boy, you got a lot of, a lot of great folks, Kelly, and we have Emily Price. Hey, Emily, I'm going to show your yarn in just a second, and looks like I was buffering there for a minute, and we have Last7654, wishing us all a good morning, and I think that's all the notifications. Wow, am I actually caught up? Well, that's good. Well, let me go ahead and start. I'm going to try to move on some of these things today. Let's see. Oh, I'm getting some more now. What did I just do here? Okay, here we go. Um, yeah, Emily thought it was still Friday <laughs> and she actually texted me and said, well, isn't that talk tomorrow? And I'm like, no, today's Saturday, sweetheart. <laughs> getting that um, pandemic fog that we all run into and every day looks the same. Um, let's see. Let's see, I probably... We have Sherry in the chat. Um, she says she's working on a sweater pattern. Fantastic, uh, Sherry. That's great. And Trish Bradley. And um, let's see. Alma from Texas. From Spring, Texas. Oh, that's a lovely name of a town. Spring. I would love to live in Spring as long as it didn't have pollen all the time. Um, we have Roberta. And um, good for you, Johnny. Looks like he's got all the panels of the sweater done. He just needs to put them all together. Isn't that the fun part, sewing it all together? Yeah. But fortunately, hopefully that won't take too long. Hopefully those sleeves will go in nicely for you. Um, well, let me go ahead and show you some things because I got a lot of show and tell today. And you're going to find this kind of funny because I had to roll these up by hand because I am away from my yarn uh, ball winder. It's up in Maryland and I'm real excited. I am planning on traveling back home this either late Tuesday or early Wednesday. So I'm really excited about that. But I got this gorgeous yarn in the mail and I've used up a lot of it already on a project that I cannot say what it is just yet because I don't want to show it to you until I'm a little bit down the, the road on it. But it involves all of these and a neutral cream all these beautiful, beautiful colors. And these are um, super wash wool, DK weight, hand dyed. And they are gorgeous. And as I'm working on this project, um, my mother-in-law, who's a really great encourager, I can tell she likes this project even better than some of the others I've worked on. She's like, oh my gosh, that is just so pretty. <laughs> and I'm like, yes, I just wanna keep, like, I don't wanna put the hook down. It's one of these projects where um, you want to finish the row you're on so that you can get to the next color and just see how it comes out, if you know what I mean. So I'm really, really excited about that. And um, yesterday, 
Um, I went to the Hobby Lobby store. I haven't been there in a long time, probably because it's like 45 minutes away from um, where we are here in South Carolina. But I found this beautiful yarn. It's, um, it's the Yarn Bee brand. I don't know if you've ever used this before. Um, it reminds me of some other yarn that I've used. It is, let me get my glasses on because they make these, uh, these letters almost like reading microfish. For those of you who know what that is, if you do, you're old because <laughs> that's, uh, that's from my generation. Um, okay, it's, this is uh, Mimosa and the color is Coral. And this feels really amazing. Um, come on, come on. It's always so hard to find out where all this information is. Where is the information? It's on here somewhere. Okay, I know that this is cotton, but I wanted to read it to be 100. Okay, here it is. It's really teeny tiny. It's like 0 .001 font, if you know what I mean. It's 62% um, cotton, 38% rayon, which ugh, it just it just feels so nice. And I am going to design a cotton top with this. Um, and I'll show you the cotton top that I've shown you in the past. And if you're looking for yarn for the top that I'm going to show you once I put this down, um, this will be a, an excellent, an excellent substitute. Uh, let me read my, get my glasses again. Um, so I want to give you the yardage on each of these. They make these things so decorative, it's hard to find the important information. It's 240 yards, so that's three, six. Okay, so this is um, 240 yards each. So you're gonna need about three or four of these, depending on your size for the top I'm gonna show you. So let me put that aside and show you the top that I'm talking about. You've seen it before if you've been to my Friday Fun Lives. This is the top. I was wearing it last week. So if you want to see what it looks like on, you can look at last week's broadcast and, and see this, this fits to you very nicely. It's not something that you want to make on the small side, but, but with this stitch, even though it's cotton, I mean, it's, it's kind of hard to, there is a little bit of ease built in to the stitch. I mean, it's not a huge amount, but like side to side, let me show you. I mean, there, there, there's a good bit of ease. So um, when you wear this, depending on the yarn you choose, but but really with the waddle stitch, um, you will, as long as you get the measurement big enough, okay, let's say when you start out big enough with this and you start that at the very bottom and then we work our way up on this design, um, make sure if you do this pattern, once I release it, I would recommend that you compare it to a sweater or a shirt that you wear a lot that you really like the fit and compare the sizing just to make sure you're on the right track. But I think the waddle stitch will kind of, you know, fill in the gaps and hopefully be very flattering fit on you. But you do need to make sure as you do this, um, and I say this in the video too, in the tutorial that'll be coming out, that it's more important that you go by the measuring tape it's very gauge centric. So you need to make sure, you know, if your stitch count is a little bit off or something, that's not as big a deal as that, that the measuring tape is true. Okay. If the measuring tape is true, there's nothing magical about the stitch count. Here's another version. This is the same pattern, except a little bit different on the trim here. Same pattern using one cake of the Stitch Studio cotton yarn, which is no longer available. But um, this takes approximately 800 to 850 to 900 um, yards in a size medium. Of course, you're going to need more if you are looking at the larger sizes. So this this literally cost me five dollars to make because it was a a cake of yarn that was um, on sale a couple years ago or maybe last year at AC Moore before they closed. And I love this yarn, and it's totally self striping. The yarn does all the work. So. If you are interested in that with the color, you can do that, or you can go to the like the Hobby Lobby Mimosa. Um, and there are other brands like that. You're looking for a cotton or a, a fiber that is suitable for the summertime. And uh, it, they're all number twos. I'm using number two or a sport weight yarn. 
I think that would work best. You can go up to a number three, but it's gonna look a lot chunkier on you. In my stage of life, I don't like things to look chunky, if you know what I mean. I like to try to make it look as nice as I possibly can. <laughs> so um, so anyway, I just wanted to throw that throw that out to you. Let me get go ahead and get back to seeing who's in the chat because this is the fun part for me. Um, do, 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 do. I read that, I read that, I read that. Um, I'm getting a little behind here. Oh, we have um, Cynthia in the chat. Hey, Cynthia and Brat's mom. Um, hope Brat is doing well. Uh, Brat, as I recall, is a cat. So I hope the cat is doing well. And um, we have Kay's Crochet Heaven. Hey, y'all, back to you. Uh, I wonder what part of the South you're from. Um, and let's see. Uh, we have Tracy from North, I guess, North Cali. I guess that's California. Um, and Lauren says, I've been making mostly blocks from the Jan Eaton book this week. I've really enjoyed doing them, although apparently my tension or yarn, I guess, is not so good as the squares don't match 100% in size. Well, you know what? Um, hmm. You know, maybe as long as they all match one another and not necessarily the book, maybe you'll be okay. Um, just a thought. And uh, let's see. We have... Um, I just got a bunch of comments in. Um, we have Lauren and Nilda from Florida. She says, new to your site. I love crocheting. Well, welcome, Nilda. We are so glad that you're here. Um, and thank you, Emily. She says she likes the red one. And we have Helen Gentile. She says, I love the top. It can be worn sporty and a little dressy, in my opinion, depending on your yarn choices. Absolutely. Um, I have a really nice cotton white skirt that, you know, if you want to get out and kind of look a little bit dressy, but you just want to wear your, you know, flip-flops or, or, you know, slip-on sandals, you know, you're good to go. I mean, it's nice and cool. And Joni says she went to the Hobby Lobby yesterday, got some Candy Crush. I love this yarn. Yeah, um, you know, I, I, I know there are a lot of opinions out there about Hobby Lobby, but when I was walking through the yarn department, I honestly, I have for big box stores, I, I think they have the best selection of yarn. They don't carry, you know, all the plethora of different brand yarns, but just what they have available in their own brand yarn is, is impressive. On one wall, I noticed, I had never seen this at Michael's or any other place before. Um, they actually had 100% uh, merino wool superwash and sock weight hand dyed yarn hanging on the wall and it was like $14, I think, a, a hank. And, um, but yesterday, all of their yarn, every scan, every hank was 30% off. So whatever 30% off of $14 is, you could get some deliciously dyed, beautiful sock weight, merino wool yarn just in the big box store. I mean, that, that to me, that was pretty impressive. So, um, Again, like I said, I don't get to go there very often because they're so far away and there aren't any where I live in Maryland. Um, but I really enjoyed going there yesterday and I showed you what I got. And I got something else I'm not going to show you yet because I got to do some experimenting with it before I release it. So I will just leave that thought with you. Um, let's see. Oh, Lauren says she got her first crochet magazine subscription and she says it's so packed with so full of pretty ideas. Uh, she says, I'm excited to try something a bit out of my comfort zone. Go for it, Lauren. Absolutely. And just remember, it's okay to make mistakes. You know, like Miss Frizzle and the Magic School Bus used to say, you know, get messy, make mistakes, have fun and learn. I mean, that's what it's all about. And with crochet, it's so easy to rip it out. Not so much in knitting. Knitting, it makes me cry when I have to rip out with that stuff. But um, with crochet, it's easier to rip back and do it again. Um, so much easier. And thank you, Alma, for your kind kind comment. And um, Pat says she's making a, a corner to corner baby blanket. That is so cool. And see if I missed anybody else here. And Archer and Ace, the, the top hasn't been released yet. I am looking at early May. If I can get it back from my editor soon enough, might be end of March, but I can't promise that yet. I'm just still waiting to get it back from from my gal who edits for me. And she's such a good editor, I need to wait for her to, to go over everything before I can release it to you. Um, uh, Cynthia, Cynthia understood my comment about microfish. She says, my nursing records are on microfish, so I'm a really old nurse. <laughs> You're a very mature nurse. We're mature, Cynthia, right? Uh, sorry to use that O word. 
um, three letter word there. Um, I, I, I wouldn't go back. I love being mature. I really do, except for the body aches. That's great. Um, let's see. We have Sahar. Um, thank you for joining us. And Nancy and um, Hilda from Germany. Welcome, welcome, Hilda. Uh, and um, Songbird Katie says, I'm old, Bonnie. <laughs> I know about microfish. I'm in Tennessee. Yeah, yeah. We're, we, we just we just know more. We know we just know we understand the museum stuff now. I mean, it's you know you're getting up there in age when you see the things that were in your kitchen or still are in your kitchen in the Smithsonian Museum. And yeah, that's happened to me on several occasions. Um, and let's see, we have Melanie from Philadelphia and and Janet Lowe and um, and let's see Cynthia and Sarah P and Joni. Hannah's in. She's uh, my admin. Was uh, rushing back from the group from uh, getting uh, fuel for the truck. Thank you for doing that, Hannah. I'm glad the truck made it back. <laughs> it has had some issues as of late. And um, Nancy says the first time here. I can't wait to make one of your blankets. Well, welcome, Nancy. I'm so glad you could join us. And we have Angela from New Egypt, New Jersey. Well, that's a cool city name. I wonder how far that is away from where my son lives. Um, and let's see, we have Mary Thompson says, working on a summer scarf from from, from, Mar from Frederick, Maryland. Hey, that's not too far from where I'm going to be once I get back home, just 30 minutes. We go up to Frederick a lot uh, to get some food. We always, we go up to your Chick-fil-A there, Mary, <laughs> um, because they have, it's just a nice drive to get out of Gaithersburg. And we just like going up to, Mar uh, up to Frederick and driving around. Um... We have Cindy and, um, oh, we have Roberta Klein. I'm going backwards in the chat in case you're wondering. Um, she says she got halfway in on the spring cable and lace. I hope you're enjoying that. It, it'll wait for you. She said then got a commission, so I had to put it on hold. Absolutely. Good for you. Um, we have Debbie Beasley from Austin, Texas. Wow, I'd love to go to Austin someday. And Susan B. and Sunshine Cram. And, um, ooh, Brat's mom says she's crocheting a Karen Hooley shawl. Karen's one of my sweet friends. I'm so glad you're supporting Karen. Thank you for doing that, Brat's mom. She, she's a great gal. Um, and we have Melanie and, um, yeah. Okay. So we, we have Wanda. I'm glad, I, I'm glad I'm still scrolling backwards. We have Wanda, the back side, backwards, wrong side crocheter. Um, hey Wanda, I hope you're doing well, my friend. Hope you're, you know, staying on that road safely. Uh, if you ever get up around Maryland this coming week, let me know. If you need a place to stay, let me know. Not sure you can get that truck in my driveway up there, but um, would be great. Be great to see you. Um, and we have Lori. She said, "Glad you're on today. I can't watch live on Fridays at work." Yeah, it, it's kind of fun to do a Saturday every now and then. Although it really throws me off. I felt really weird not doing this yesterday but um was out doing other stuff but it was it was just kind of strange um and let's see we have songbird katie diana from ohio alana um lauren and i think i'm catching up although you know me i never catch up but um it's always kind of a fun thought though all right so i'm going back going back going back we have yuchi um welcome i'm so glad you could join us um and Mary, and let's see, oh, Brenda Young, thank you for your comment, Brenda, and um, and Melanie Lewis, and uh, let's see, do, 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 okay, I read that, I read that, I read that, I'm trying to catch up with you guys, you're so good, um, do, 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 okay, and Emily says she likes the red one. Oh, we have Nilda from Florida, new to the site, love crocheting. I think I read that one, but, well, oh, maybe maybe not. That might be a different person, but but welcome, my Florida friend. My home state where I was born lived, my childhood was in South Florida. So um, welcome. I, I can't wait to go back, actually. Um, and Wanda says, I don't wear sleeveless. Can you add sleeves? You know what, one, I think you can if you just kind of attach the yarn and go round and around and around in a, um, using the same waddle stitch, I think it would be easy breezy to add sleeves. I may actually experiment with that. Um, 
on another on another project but yes you definitely can but i will say that these these sleeveless don't fit like tank tops they fit better than a tank top if you know what i mean because it does cover up most of your arm uh, or at least up to the point where your arm starts okay um and Mary says, AC Moore will forever be my favorite craft store. Yeah, that was, a, that was a pretty dangerous place for me. Not just with yarn, but with all the other stuff they'd have. The bags, the scarves, everything. I, I Yeah, I miss that store, but I'm probably saving money now that they went out of business. And, and thank, thank the good Lord that I don't live near a Hobby Lobby because I think I would be dropping a lot more money there too. So, um, yeah, I just need to focus on, you know, the yarn that I have. But... Uh, always looking for, you know, something to inspire me and, and getting new yarn does inspire new creations. And I'm going to show you some more here. Um, oh, thank you, Melanie. Um, or thank you, Hannah, for praying for Mel. Uh, I'm sorry, Hannah, Melanie. Okay. I'll get this straight. Melanie praying for my daughter, Hannah. Thank you so much. Um, Hannah's going to be, um, uh, flying down here, uh, on one of those spun cheap spirit flights, uh, I guess Tuesday. So if you want to pray for her, just, I think it'd be the first time she'll be flying by herself. Um, but she's a big girl. She's flown, golly, she's flown across the Atlantic and she's also flown with my husband and me to, where did we go? Uh, we went to Seoul. So it, she's been on like long plane flights. That's not an issue, but the first time flying by herself can be kind of strange. So, um, but she'll be great. She's going to come down here and, and take my place and help take care of Grandma Barker for me. So she is like indispensable to our family right now. So I just thank God for you, Hannah. You're, you're amazing. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and let's see. We have Nancy from Michigan. And let's see. Well, I'm as soon as I thought I was getting caught up, I kind of lost my way again. But let me show you something else because I know you guys didn't tune in just to hear me talk about nothing. <laughs> um, let me show you some yarn. I got it. Michael's this week. First time I've been to Michael's in a while. And again, this is not, you know, payment endorsed or anything like that. This is just me going shopping. I paid for all this stuff. And uh, but look, look what I found. Aren't these adorable? I, I have no idea if I'm going to make a knit hat or a crocheted hat. I don't know that there's enough for a crochet hat here. But um, I might try one. I might try crocheting a hat with this. We'll see what happens. I have to look at the yardage and see what I think. But this, won't that make a cute hat? Hannah, what do you think? Would you want this hat? <laughs> Hannah is my, uh, she she rescues, even, even at her age, she rescues like little cute things in stores, um, not in stores, in like thrift stores and places like that. I mean, she's rescued some really cute animals. She's really into rescuing Build-A-Bear animals that have been abandoned like in thrift stores, Salvation Army stores, and um, has like given them to kids at church and things. It's really fun, but um, she loves cutesy things. Look what I found on clearance. And I wanted to show this to you. The, um, it's called It's a Wrap. And this is the yarn that I, I was thinking of one of the yarns I was thinking of last week and I couldn't come up with the name. Look at the color. It's one of those gradual um, changing of colors like the one I, the top that I just showed you. And I think this is gonna look really spectacular. This is, let me get my glasses on again so I can read the microfish. This says it's a number one, super fine. But honestly, to me, there are like three, four, one, two, three, let me see. Okay, there are four thin strands woven together and like one strand will change colors while the others remain the same so that the change is extremely gradual. It says it's a number one. Personally, I think this would also work even though I require a number two, but I think this is a thick enough number one. It'll still work for these tops. So I got two of these um, because the yardage is a little bit less than what I expected. Let me see what the yardage is. Um, it's 623 yards. I need like 850 yards. So what I am going to do is I think I'm going to start with maybe the inside blue and go blue, 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 blue to green and then connect the green one 
so that the color is consistent and then it'll kind of gradually go back to the blue. But I'm only going to need a little bit of this, maybe maybe a, a, a fourth of this. Uh, so what you do on these is think about what color do you want up around your face? Um, which color blesses you the most, you know, but which looks better on you up around your face. And that's the color I would try to plan on ending with. So, um, and I, I can do blues or greens. So I, you know, it doesn't really matter to me how this one turns out. Um, uh, but I just wanted to show that to you. I got these, um, they were apparently discontinuing this particular color, but they do have other colorways available. These were $5 each. So, you know, if they have any more of those at, at your Michael store, go get it. Um, and the, oh, I got to show you. I did, I showed this to folks on, on social, on social media. I want to show you what I found at Michael's. This is the first time I've found these at Michael's. I found a soft hook, the Susan Bates, the hooks that I love, a Susan Bates soft hook at Michael's. This was, I think it was $2.55. And, um, I don't like these hooks because they're cheap. I love these hooks because these are my absolute favorite hooks. And yeah, I've tried the fancy ones. I, you know, although in saying, in saying all this, you know, I love Susan Bates hooks and um, I can't do a thing with the boy hooks, but these hooks are also kind of like fitting shoes for your feet, if you know what I mean. Um, it's a very personal thing, and I know that many of you out there can't do anything with the Susan Bates, but you like the boy hook, that's totally fine. But I'm just, you know, people always want to know, what is your opinion of hooks? What's the best hook? And so I say, for me, it's this one. And so far, this is the best one. And they have these at Michael's. They did not have a lot, but they had a brand new, like, cardboard display up that I've never seen before. So that tells me that maybe they're going to have them there more consistently, which is great because you guys can go to Michael's and get these. Those of you who are in the U.S., um, I know other people have asked me about these overseas and they may not be as readily available, but you can get them on Amazon as well. They're more expensive. They're like twice as expensive on Amazon, but um, you know, just look them up. You can look them up on the Susan Bates site, or I, I, which I think is now owned by Your Inspirations, which may be why they're in the stores because they have a lot of, um, they have a lot of uh, what do you call it, uh, marketing muscle these days since they own all the big box stuff now. So I'm glad somebody finally got these. So um, exciting. That was, that was like, I was dumbfounded. And it just so happened that I needed a size H. I have a couple size H, just regular metal hooks, which I can use. It's not, a, I was actually using a regular metal one because this one I think is at home in Maryland, but I went ahead and picked this one up just to show you guys and because I wanted it. And here's something else I, I got. I am, I'm indecisive is exactly what I can do with this, but I can go two different directions. Um, again, this is not a paid endorsement. This is my money <laughs> spent at Michael's, um, but the Caron Cotton Ripple Cakes, if you've seen this, okay, look at these colors. I saw these colors and I thought, um, these have got to go together in something. This would make a really nice, um, like my beginner's granny square shawl. I think this would be an excellent choice. You'd have to go down to um, a different size hook from the video, but I think this would be this would be a good substitute and you can vary the yarn. This would be great yarn for the, like if you're looking for a cotton baby blanket and let's say you wanna do my shell baby blanket that's on my channel and alternate these two colors every row. It's gonna be a lot of strings to hide, but I think this would look spectacular. Let me tell you some information. This is a number three, which means it's a DK weight yarn, 100% cotton. I, I just love cotton. I went to the store to get cotton, both stores, and I came home with the goods. Each of these has 491 yards, um, or, to, or 449 meters, 8.5 ounces. Uh, they're recommending a size G hook. I would probably use an H and I've, I've said this in the past, but for those of you who maybe haven't heard my opinion on this, uh, the reason I, I usually up my hook size by one to whatever is recommended on the label. See, make sure I, okay, that's upside down for you. That's not helpful. 
I don't even know if you could read that. That might even be backwards to you, but they have the, the, the knitting needle and then crochet hook recommendation. And what they oftentimes do, let me, let me just verify. Okay, so what they do is a lot of times I think they prioritize the knitting needle. Okay, so they're recommending a four millimeter knitting needle. And so what they do is they often transcribe that. Well, for a crochet hook, a four millimeter is a G hook. But you and I both know that knitting and crocheting, while we there are similarities, when it comes to millimeters and hook sizes, they're different. Um, yes, the G hook is the equivalent of a four millimeter when you're measuring it, you know, when you get your, your machinist or your, your engineer to measure it, they are the same diameter, absolutely. But when it comes to the crafts, I would say I would bump up. I would bump up to a size H on this. You can use a G, you're gonna have very tight uh, fabric. So if you want tight fabric, follow this. If you want more natural, little bit, little bit of a give to the fabric, I, I bump up. So, uh, and the reason I'm even saying that is because a lot of, a lot of times people go legalistically with what is on the label. Like, oh, but it says I have to use a G. No, you don't have to use a G. You can use whatever you want to use. Um, but I just wanted to throw that out there. I guess I'm a little bit of a, uh, uh, I don't know, little advent guard there, but, but actually not. That's just a general rule of thumb on that. So, Ah, this, these colors, I cannot tell you though. I saw those yellows and I, I can't necessarily wear the yellows. I might be able to pull that yellow off because it's a little bit of more of a brownish mustard yellow. I might be able to wear that. That would be kind of fun. So I'm, I'm toying, I'm not sure whether I'm going to make it into a garment, to a shawl. Uh, I've even thought about a handbag for the summer. So, you know, just kind of a big handbag you throw over your shoulder. So, let me know. I'm going to, I think I may just, if you have any ideas, put it in the chat. I would love to hear your ideas. I may not get to get to read all the chat today, but, um, I'm going to try. <laughs> I am definitely going to try. So let me go back to trying to do some of that. Um, Ooh, we have, um, crochet Tomokichi and, um, from Japan in the chat. Uh, welcome. Welcome. Um, I uh, hope you're doing well in your beautiful country. I have so many friends in Japan. I love, I would love to go to your country. I really want to go there. Um, we have Christine from Belgium, <clears throat> excuse me. And um, <laughs> Roberta says, you're not old till you remember punch cards. Huh, I never had to use those Roberta, but I remember kids walking across campus and people, you know, dropping them. And I remember punch cards. Oh, I remember having to use floppy disk if that's anything, <laughs> I guess that came after the punch cards. But um, I remember seeing others use them. I, I stayed away from computers during that time, at least. I uh, wasn't forced into it at that point. Um, we have Jacqueline from Los Angeles. And let's see. Oh, thank you, Sarah. She said she likes my T-shirt. Um, this is actually a new T-shirt. It's up in my Teespring store. Um, for those of you who are interested... And also, I've been wearing hats a lot lately, so I went ahead and I have a little hat up in there. And it's really nice. It's cotton. It's soft in the front. Let me just show you. It's soft in the front. It's not one of those hard, you know, hats in the front. It's called a dad's hat, but it, it really fits nicely. And it's got the little buckle in the back. And i um, really excited about these because it's summertime and my... Uh, my dermatologist tells me I got to stay out of the sun or I don't stay out of the sun. One doctor's telling me you got to get out so you can make vitamin D and the other one's saying stay out of the sun because of the, you know, stuff on your face. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I decided to compromise. I'm going to be out in the sun and I am going to wear a hat. So there you go. I know that's not perfect. Doesn't do everything, but maybe it'll help to some extent. But um, if any of y'all are looking for, you know, just fun, summery kind of t-shirts, there's the Teespring store. If you look at the bottom of where the video is, let me see if I can see it here. Yeah, it's just below there where you see a hat and hoodies and stuff like that. There are a lot of different ones. It's really hard to read the text with those pictures down there. But when you go to the page, you can see a lot. But um, just to let you know, I've priced them on the low end. Uh, oh, that's an interesting question. Um, 
But anyway, back to the, the Teespring store. Um, I, I do try to keep them. I price them way down. They're not like crazy prices like some of those stores are. Let me see. Hannah had a question for me. Oops, sorry, Hannah. <laughs> um, I have two questions. Uh, Diane Z would like to know, uh, what's a good yarn to buy? That is a really hard question, Diane. It really depends on, uh, I would ask you in return, what do you want to make? Um, and is it for a particular person? Um, do they have yarn? Do they have wool allergies? I mean, that, that kind of helps determine what you want to make for somebody. Is it for a child? Like if it's for a baby blanket, you probably don't want to use your fancy schmancy yarn. You want to use something that is machine washable and perhaps dryable. Um, if it's a hat or something, you know, I think the acrylics work well. I like wools. I love alpaca. So, I mean, there's like, uh, it's like asking to me with yarn nowadays. That's a great question. It, it's something that could take hours to answer. It's almost like asking uh, for those of you who remember encyclopedias, it's like, which letter of the encyclopedia do you like the best? And it's like, oh, wow, um, because it really depends on what you're looking for. But if you want to ever email me specifics on that, you can just use my email address and I can get back with the you know private interaction on that question. Um, and Tracy Hamilton was wondering if you've ever put strands of yarn together to crochet. Yes, I have, actually. Um, and that's something I wanted to get more into and show on my channel. I just haven't gotten around to it yet. I've got, I've got the yarn. Um, and actually there's a project I am going to be coming out with later this summer, making a rug where I actually do just that. I'm using thick, thicker number five yarn and I'm putting, uh, multiple, uh, strands together so that I can make a rug and then change the colors by changing one of the strands out as I go to try to gradually ease the color change. So yeah, and, and um, another, another thing that I'm hoping to do soon is to make some scarves for the fall where you take a strand of, let's say, lace wool and you mix it with a strand of um, mohair and it just it, 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 you can get some amazing results. And I've done that where I've mixed a strand of color changing lace yarn with a strand of just a uh, plain cream colored soft weight wool. And that little strand is just enough to give the yarn a gradual color change. There's a lot of, uh, there are a lot of things that you can do um, with that. Um, great question of both of those questions, Diane and Tracy, great questions. Um, Let's see, and let's see, da, 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 da. we have Joshua. Um, no, Joshua, I'm not crocheting anything in this live. I, I know a lot of people do, but there are so many of you, I wanna interact with you and things that I have to show you. Um, but I do have more than 600 other videos on my channel where I'm demonstrating projects from start to finish. I mean, I could try crocheting, but honestly, I think it would, I wouldn't be able to interact with you all in the same way. So, um, it, and you wouldn't probably be able to see what I'm doing very well. So um, this is not a demonstration so much. It's just a, a social time um, with, our, with our crochet friends and just um, checking in, time to encourage one another and just you know, see how everybody's doing. It's also a chance to show you some things that I'm, I've got in the works and um, you know, some ideas that are gonna be coming uh, soon to my channel. Um, yeah, so, uh, but thanks for joining us anyway. Um, and Jacqueline says, love going there to Hobby Lobby every week for the yarn sale. Yeah, 30% off all the yarn. That was like, really? Um, I'm almost tempted to go back today, but I know better. I, I'm going to be traveling home and I don't have room for the stuff that I have to bring back. So um, my husband took all my studio, my editing computer, all my big stuff filled one car yesterday. So I'm going to be filling a very small car tomorrow and heading back. Um, and okay. Cynthia says we crochet magazine just released the cutest pattern for an Afghan made of cassette tapes. Oh my goodness. Also boom, 
Boom boxes, TV sign off screen. Wow. I'm going to have to look at that to see what that's all about. Um, that sounds interesting, Cynthia. And, uh, oh, Johnny, it's so sad. She said a good friend had a brain injury going to make her your spring throw to take in the hospital visits. That's wonderful of you. That That is so sweet. I, I hope your friend gets better. That That's hard. That is so, so hard. Um, thanks for responding to Joshua, Hannah. I really appreciate that. I'm finally catching up on those. Roberta said that um, she did punch cards in high school. <laughs> wow. Yeah. I did a lot of other stuff that would probably, you know, date me. I, I won't go there. But, uh, yeah. Um, although what I consider old is not stuff I'm familiar with, you know. Things that I, I mean, I, I grew up having the phone attached to the wall with a long cord and when my kids were growing up, they used to do jump rope with the cord while I was trying to talk on the phone. I don't know if anybody of you experienced that. Um, didn't get a cell phone until, gosh, my kids were almost teenagers and I was kind of resistant to that whole idea. Um, now I have to, I, I got this this week. I got a, an Apple Watch, um, which I'm really, really, really glad that I have an Apple Watch now. Um, and let me tell you, let me tell you why I got this and I, it's really helping me a lot. I, I injured my thumb. I injured my left thumb. It's been really sore for months. I, I, and I think part of it is by reaching for my cell phone out of my pocket because of responding to my family, um, responding to customers where, you know, catch, catching up with things. So it's just emotion. I, I think I was probably doing this probably more than 50 times a day. And so having a thumb injury, it got to where um, I can't even play the flute very well um, without pain because of the holding the way you have to hold it with the thumb. So um, what's nice when I get a notification, I get it on my watch now and I can tap it to know whether I need to go onto my computer or do something else. But instead of automatically defaulting to using my thumb to pull out my phone, I just look at my wrist and I got it. Um, also, it has a lot of these really, this is not an Apple commercial, I promise you, but um, it has a lot of medical benefits that I could probably benefit from, you know, being a woman traveling on my own. Um, there's a fall, I don't know if you all knew this, but my mother-in-law who's 92 has one now as well because a good friend of ours who works for them told us about the fall feature that if you, are ever by yourself and you have a fall and you're wearing the watch and you become unconscious, like unable to respond. Um, did you know that it will call 911 for you? If your arm, if it detects a fall and then you are motionless for more than 45 seconds, it will prompt you, ask you if you're okay. And if it does not get a response from you, it will automatically dial 911. I'm like, really? <laughs> um, so because of that, my mother-in-law is wearing one. She also wears one to bed because sometimes in the middle of the night, she will get up and she's able to go to the restroom by herself. I know this is probably too much information, but a lot of you all may be in this season of life or know, I know you care for someone who's, who are in seasons of life like this. So um, this way, if she falls, I will know. People will be notified even if I sleep through it. So pretty cool. So anyway, I decided, yeah, you know, it was not cheap, but I thought, well, you know, to keep from further injuring my hands, which are my livelihood, this is, this is a good investment. So I've been, you know, feeling real techy this week um, with this thing. All right. So, um, Hannah's sending me some more questions. Thank you, Hannah. Emmeline would like to know what yarns you recommend that are virgin wool and not too itchy. Ugh. I would have to do some research on that, Emily, to really know what you might be looking for. Um, the companies that I I use may not be necessarily available where you are. So what I would recommend you do is, is go to a local yarn store in your area if you can. Um, I can send you the name of one that, that I stopped at when, when I was traveling through the Alps, because I know you're in Switzerland. Um, and she had some fantastic yarn there. She would probably be better able to recommend 
uh, yarns that would be available to you over there in Europe. Um, I really like Cascade yarns. I know Cascade has, you know, the, the I guess you call it virgin wool, wool that's not super washed, I guess is what you're looking for. Because regular wool and super washed wool are kind of different and you have to be careful about how you treat them differently. I need to do a video on that because that gets a little complicated. Um, but if you want to email me, um, I can I can maybe do some research for you. Um, I would like to put you in touch with maybe even somebody. Um, you could maybe even email the lady who's my friend at So Original at SoOriginal.com. If you uh, contact her, she would be able to recommend far better than I could. Okay, if that makes sense. I hope I'm sorry. I can't just rattle things off, but I want you to get accurate information. Um, uh, okay, Tracy found a picture of someone wearing crochet and was wondering if I've ever tried to crochet the item. If you send the picture to me, Tracy, um, I can maybe answer that question better. I know you can't post a picture in the chat, but um, if you want to contact me, um, this is to Tracy H. If you could, you know, contact me on that, I could try to get back with you. Uh, let's see. Uh, Lauren says, I sorted my yarn stash and realized I had a full set of pastel rainbow colored yarn. So I may make a larger size baby blanket with that for my friend's daughter. Oh, that sounds beautiful. I love things that are so colorful like that. Um, and Alma likes Hobby Lobby. Yeah, I, I just wish there was one closer to me. Um, uh, Roberta says, if you, telling Hannah, if you missed one punch on one card, you had to start over. And don't they have, didn't those card punch cards have to be in a specific order too, or that would kind of foul things up? Whew, I'm glad we're not, not having to deal with that. I'm sure I would get it messed up. All right. Um, okay. All right. So I'm going to just go forward, guys. I'm, I'm sorry if I missed anybody's comment there. Um, do, do, do. I'm trying to catch up. And yeah, Jane Scott says, you never have too much New York. No, you don't, Jane. It's so inspirational. Uh, Ann Butler says, I love this chat today. I always watch on Fridays at work, but I'm not able to crochet at the same time. Oh, that would be, f I wish I could crochet at the same time, but quite honestly, you guys would be shortchanged. I just, my brain would be on fry. <laughs> um, Oh, thank you, Pat. She wants, um, Hannah, did you post? I think Hannah did post that link for you. Um, Pat was asking about the watch link. Um, for those of you who are new, I have a, a streaming service that is all crochet designs um, and actually some exclusive designs that don't even appear on this channel. It's a paid subscription. Uh, just real quick, it's $6.95 a month. If you get a year subscription, it's the cost of 10 months and not 12, so it's a little bit of a discount there. Um, and I hope to be releasing some things very soon. I've been very busy transitioning here as of late and working really hard on a surprise project. So I'm hoping once I get home, I'll be able to upload some more behind the scenes um, video to that site. But, but when you subscribe to that site, you also are able to get a lot of complimentary Patterns. Not all of the videos on there have complementary patterns. Some I own the copyrights to and some I don't. Um, but there are or are becoming more and more. Every time I release a new pattern, if I own the copyright, uh, you get a complementary pattern as part of your subscription fee, which in some cases can be cheaper than buying the patterns outright. But, um, but it, all the videos there are ad and commercial and spam free. And... Um, to some people that is worth something, to me that is worth something. I'm really enjoying, you know, if I watch my programs or watch something in the evening, it's really nice to not have to sit through 15 minutes of commercials or even five minutes of it. You know, it just disrupts things. I know it, crocheting, it can kind of disrupt, you know, what you're doing. But, um, but anyway, um, Hannah is saying, uh, Kelly wants to know if I, if I was gonna be crocheting a rug. Yes, I will, Kelly. I actually started one. 
I didn't like the way it was coming out, so I'm going to be ripping it back and starting again. But um, I am working on a crochet rug. It's gonna be an easy beginner crochet rug. It's nothing spectacular. It's not gonna be like a huge, you know, <laughs> uh, it's not gonna be like the Celtic, um, the Celtic, you know, round rug that's already on my site. It's gonna be much simpler, uh, more homey, but a, a color change is gonna be focused more on the color more than the actual stitches. But I think it'll, I think it's gonna be nice. I just have to get it the size just right. I started out with it being a little too big. So I need to rip it back. And once I get back to doing that, I spent a lot of time on it and I'm just not happy with it. I want it to be streamlined, simplified. And in order to do that, I need to just keep working on it. But it is coming this summer sometime. Um, and Sandra was wondering if if she was to make a generic Aran sweater, what brands of yarn would you recommend before she, before she touches the expensive yarn? Um, hmm, it depends, um, Sandra, on which sweater. If you're if you're gonna do my Aran sweater that I have um, in my Lovecraft store, it's also on my. It's not on the YouTube uh, uh, channel here, but it is on my my watch.bonniebaycrochet.com site. It's um, Bonnie's Aaron cabled sweater. Um, I use a, a moderately priced yarn. It's uh, Barocco Vintage DK. It's not super pricey. It's, it's actually quite moderately priced. It's not cheap Ola stuff. It's not the, you know, it's not the stuff that you're gonna wear once and regret that you used that yarn. Uh, which has been my experience with some, not all, but with some of the acrylics I have, you know, like the, okay, I'm going to go ahead and throw one company or one, one brand, one, one type of yarn under the bus right now, guys, um, because I have experience with this. I got some of this Bernat, uh, uh, super saver, you know, yarn, and I made this beautiful, uh, gray sweater with it. This was years ago. And I think I wore the sweater once and underneath the arm and all down the side, it was just, looked like I'd been wearing it for 10 years, all matted up on me. And I wasn't real happy with that. So if you're gonna put a lot of time into something, um, you might wanna put a little bit of investment into it. Doesn't have to be made out of, you know, you know, imported from Paris or, or you know, Italy, you know, fancy, you know, $100 a hank yarn. Um, but the, the Barocco Vintage DK is 50-50, 50% acrylic, 50% um, wool. And it, it, it wears very well. I mean, nothing is going to wear perfectly. If you're going to wear it and enjoy it, you're going to have to you know, care for it. But the Barocco Vintage DK is actually a pretty good yarn to try. Um, the, let's see... I, I would I would try that now if you could, if you can find a DK weight acrylic yarn that you want to try you may want to try a small sample of it and just you know rub it a little bit not a lot but just to see you know if it pills much if it's pilling as you work with it um, that's a good indication that's going to pill more um, all yarn pills a little bit to some extent um, but you know you can care for that but some some yarn is just gosh awful if you know what I mean um probably went on there for a long time on that so I hope that hope that's helpful um okay okay someone is suggesting miss miss blind st stitches is um set creations says I should do my patterns in audio visual Okay, in audio for visual impaired people who want to have access to your patterns. Hmm. If you want to contact me and, and be more specific um, about what you mean by that and how I can do that, I would be very willing to you know, try to incorporate some ideas that would help you more. If you can just um, email me on that one, I would like to learn more about how you know I can serve you in that regard. Um, and Kelly Hart wants to know if I'm going to crochet a cowl tutorial someday. I do have, I do believe I have a couple on the watch site. I think I have some on my channel already. If you want to do a little Google search, or not Google search, do a search 
Um, I know I did two of those uh, for Cascade Yarns. They're free patterns through Cascade Yarns and they are on the channel. There's at least one on the channel, um, maybe a couple. So if you go to my channel and look under playlist and go to um, scarves, it should be under the scarf cowls category. Um, and if you don't find it, email me. I can email you the links, but I know there are, excuse me, there are cowls up on my channel already. I've done them a long time and I haven't done a lot of them simply because they don't, they don't go very far and they don't seem to be real popular with you all. Um, but if you want some more of those, I can certainly, you know, think about designing some more of those. Uh, let's see. I also have a leaflet, an entire leaflet by Leisure Arts or published by Leisure Arts called Cow Cowls caps and cuffs or something like that where it's a cowl and a hat and fingerless gloves they're like a matching set they're like three or four matching sets in the leaflets I think maybe at least three I think there are four sets of those in the leaflets I wish I had one to show you but I sent those back home um, but definitely check those out if you go to my there's a link there um, Kelly that says Bonnie's Books for on Amazon. If you click on that, you can see that one on Amazon. And I have, you know, like I say, there are four, at least four sets um, of that available. I don't have, um, you know what I'm, you know what I'm going to do? I'm, I'm going to get around. What I'll do is I'll put on my list for, for the preparing for the fall. I will try to crochet one of those sets up for you. I have been given permission by Leisure Arts to do that. It's just that I've you know, I've got a calendar of full of, of things on my crochet list. And with my sore thumb that's healing, um, it just takes me a little more time these days. So um, I will definitely, definitely, de that's definitely going to be something I'll be doing in the future. Just not any time, you know, not in the next week or two, but it'll be probably coming this fall, winter. Um, all right, I've gone on and on and on. Um, okay, I see. I understand your question now, Tracy. I'm sorry. I didn't, didn't understand it. Um, wanted to know if I ever tried to follow a picture to make a pattern. Is that what, is that what you're asking? Um, I get inspired all the time by looking at pictures. Um, I try not to copy verbatim because then that would be a copyright issue. But, um, I, I, yeah, I can't look at a picture or even go, go shopping in a store you know, sometimes I've actually measured things at the store, carry my little tape measure and I'll see something I like and I like the length. So what length is that? So I'll measure it and then do something totally different stitch wise, but maybe copy or, you know, emulate, maybe that's a better word, um, emulate the, uh, the dimensions of it, but just use different filler or, you know, a different using it on something else. Okay, Sharona Rose would like to know if I have a round or semicircle shawl pattern already done or in the works. There is a semicircle pattern in the Celtic Cable Crochet book. It's actually the last design in that book. I don't have that book showing here, but it's the one with the, the lady with the brown poncho on the front. There is a semi, you know, circular pattern. Uh, it's kind of not quite a half moon, but yeah, it's kind of a, a semi-circular uh, shawl. I haven't done one of those in a while. Um, there are many though. If you go to the Lovecraft store and you look at the other designers, uh, if you just put in what you described to me, a, a shawl, you will find uh, many by other excellent designers. So maybe you could try looking at that. There's one that has been trending on Lovecraft's for for months, it's a yet beautiful yellow shawl. Um, so if you if you look up shawls at Lovecrafts, you'll see that it's really beautiful. So maybe you should check that one out. But um, yeah, I, I, I'm trying to think if I have any other that are semi. Most of mine are triangular or or asymmetrical uh, scarves right now. But that's something I probably should think about doing. All right, let me go ahead and put, I'm gonna put my email in the comments because Hannah's requesting. Okay, and this way, if I don't get to your question, you can respond to me, you know, through email. Give me a couple days. Um, if it's the weekend, this is Saturday. Um, 
I wanted to also say one thing too, that if you contact me over a weekend, especially like on a Sunday, just know that I do, I do take Sundays kind of seriously as a day of rest. And um, I have to restrain myself. I really do. I have to restrain myself from doing work on Sunday. But I really need that day to to do something else, to to worship, um, to to rest. Um, so if if you contact me over the weekends, or you know, I get emails uh, continuously because it's a world, you know, from people from different parts of the world, different time zones. So if, if I ever don't answer you right away, please don't feel offended. Sometimes you just might be on a different time zone than me. I might be sleeping <laughs> or um, it could be Sunday and, um, you know, things come up with family. But thanks for your understanding. I know this past week it took me a few days to get to some of you all with the email. But know that it's me answering it. It's not a robot. It's not it's not a, a secretary or something there. I don't have such a thing. Um so uh, Hannah is one of my assistants during the, you know, she moderates for me during the live and I have my other daughter who helps me with editing and other, and another, another daughter-in-law who, who helps me as needed, but, but it's not, you know, every day. So if something comes up with the family, you just, just expect that it's going to be a couple days before I can get to you, but I welcome you to send me your questions and I will get back to you as soon as I can, as best as I can. And if you ever have a question about crochet, it's always helpful to have pictures before I can really respond, if I can even respond to help. Um, okay. Oh, we have Creatively Tracy in the chat. She's like, ah, I'm so late. Well, not as late as me answering your comment, Tracy. So glad that you're here. Um, yeah, and Sandra uh, talking about some of the, the old school stuff. She says, me too. Now it's more economical to have a self it definitely is economical to have a cell phone. I, I wouldn't go anywhere without my cell phone now. Um, it's my navigational tool. It's everything. It, my cell phone knows me better than I do, um, which is kind of scary. But anyway, Creatively Tracy is saying she loves her Apple Watch. Yeah, I wasn't sure how I felt about this, but um, I'm going to let you guys in on a secret. Um, you know, no, I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait because it may not work out. I, I'm going to wait, but... I'm going to be doing something in regards to that Apple Watch soon. Um, oh, and Lauren says, oh, my cable arrived to attach to my Knit Pro Tunisian crochet hook and circular knitting needles. So now I can make my Tunisian blanket project. Excellent, Lauren. I actually understood what you're talking about. I had to read it a little bit to understand that. But um, that is so cool. Um, my friend um, Brenda would be would be proud. My friend um Brenda Berg, she's a Tunisian crochet designer, uh, great gal. I have a I have an interview with her on my channel. If you ever want to meet Brenda, she's got some some she's got a great book out. You should probably check out if you like Tunisian. And Violet says that um, telling Lauren that Bernat baby baby softy is amazing for baby Afghans and sweaters. Hey, give it a try. And just in what I said earlier about the Bernat Super Saver yarn. That is different. I mean, I use other Bernat yarns. You know, as you you know, I'm not throwing the whole company under the bus here. Just that particular yarn for garments um, earlier in our discussion. Because, uh, you know, these yarn companies make all kinds of different yarns. And, um, yeah, I've used some of their other, because I think they're part of Premier. Or I could be mistaken. I Maybe they're Yarnspirations. And Yarnspirations has a whole bunch of different uh, types of yarns. So they're all different. It's like kids, they're all different and they behave differently. It's just that they're super saver. I felt at the time behaved very poorly for me, but I have used some of their other stuff and have been delighted with it. Um, yeah, okay, so, oh, Deborah says, oh, neat, I play the flute too. I also homeschooled five children in the 80s and 90s before it was cool. Good for you, Deborah. Yeah, we started, we started homeschooling Gee, when did we start? It was in the it was in the early nineties, yeah. And we made it through. We made it through with our brains intact. It's so so cool. Actually, I think I learned more from my homeschooling experience than I did all through my uh, my my school. Well, my you know my uh, up through high school and into college. I I learned significant things from college, sure. But all this stuff that I wanted to know and didn't get to take the classes on, 
guess what my kids got to study? <laughs> they got to learn the stuff that I wanted to know and didn't have the time to. Um, so we had a great time and, and, and living just north of Washington, D.C., we could we could go to a lot of these places and yeah, it, yeah, great, great, great times. I won't focus too much on that, Deborah, but yeah, uh, it was time well spent. I'm just so glad that we could do it. Um, all right, I'm going to skip over some conversations here. And okay. Yeah, Hannah's telling um, Lauren that sensitive skin is a hard thing to deal with. She says, I've got a whole closet full of clothes and I wear the same t-shirts all the time. Okay, yeah. Yeah, I'm going to, that's one thing I'm going to do when I go home, Hannah. I'm going to, anything that I don't automatically pick out to wear, it's, it's going, it's going. Someone else can, can be blessed by it. I don't need to hang on to it. And um, let's see. I'm going to, okay. <laughs> Proverbs 31 yarn says, I absolutely love your t-shirt. Where did you find it? Um, this is a Proverbs 31. I like your name. It's it's actually, this is um, Proverbs 31, 13 is the verse that I decided to put on the shirt. Um, this is in my Teespring store. Uh, so just if you look below the video, there's a little advertisement there about the Teespring store. If you click on that, it'll take you there. There are a lot of different designs there, but um, this is the newest one. And I'm real excited about this one. I wanted something, kind. I know it's, you know, maybe not suitable for everybody, um, but it's just one of those Bible verses that I love. The idea that, you know, the Bible talks about the yarn and so forth. Um, there is something that I, I want to do this summer. I don't know when I'll get to do it, but my daughter-in-law, um, Christy, works at this Bible history museum in, um, in Georgia. It's south of Atlanta. I can't remember exactly where it is. I think it's Grange, Georgia, if I'm, if I'm saying that right. I'm probably saying it wrong, but um, she works there and she was telling me that she wanted me to come down there and broadcast from the museum because they have a section where they have like a tent made out of goat's hair and other biblically based, you know, wool and stuff like that. And she knows a lot about that. And I thought it would be so cool to go down there and have her talk to us about some of the things there at the museum that are related to yarn and you know, weaving the fibers and stuff like that. So I'm hoping to be able to go down there to visit them and do that this year. So be on the lookout for that. I mean, we haven't scheduled it yet, but um, i just real excited about once, you know, COVID is, you know, kind of in the rear view mirror. Um, I want to be able to go down there and really interact on that and learn more myself because there, you know, in, in the scriptures, there's a lot of, uh, a lot of reference to, to knitting, and, and whenever, I don't know that they had a crochet hook back then. They may have, we don't know. But whenever you hear, there's a lot of, you know, references to knitting in the Bible. But just keep in mind when you hear that, that the word knit in some languages also refers to crochet. Um, like my, my Russian friend taught me, she's like, that everything is called knitting. You either knit with a needle, knit with two needles, or you knit with a hook. So... So when you hear that word, it's not necessarily uh, excluding us as crocheters. Um, it can be a very inclusive word, and a lot of people don't know that. But anyway, that's what my Russian friend told me. So, uh, so when you see those scriptures about there, there are scriptures about um, even um, in uh, I know I'm good. I think it's Psalm one thirty nine where it talks about the Lord knitting us together in our mother's womb. Wow, I mean that's like creation you know a word and and using you know a fiber related word which is really cool but anyway i'm digressing here um and it's after one o'clock how does the time fly by so much um so that's answering um proverbs 31's question and um let's see we have shelly mb says listening listening to, to the video while doing stuff around the house Good for you, Shelly. And um, and Scarlett says, I love the teal blanket in the chair. It is made sideways like the Aaron heart, which I made and love. Yes, that this is made going up and down, back and forth, so that you're only working on one stitch at a time, uh, which I find relaxing. 
even if it's hard stitches at times, but it's just, yeah, going back and forth, just focused on one stitch for these rows and then change to a different stitch. So by the time you get bored of the one stitch, it's time to change to another one. So that's kind of the way I like to roll. So I hope you, the, for those of you who aren't familiar with this, this is the Spring Cables and Lace. I have this available in my Lovecraft store. Um, it's also on my YouTube channel. So the complete video tutorial with all the links you need, always check the video descriptions for that. I know I'm repeating myself, but um, anyway, um, let's see. Yeah, thank you, Wanda. Wanda says, would love to go there. Wanda, you ever find yourself near, you know, Germantown, Gaithersburg, Maryland, wherever, even in Frederick or somewhere, give me a call. I will drop what I'm doing and we'll have lunch or something. My treat, I promise you. <laughs> just, just let me know if we can be in the same city at the same time. I would love to bless you or just catch up with you. Um, thank you, Violet. She says Psalm 139, 13. That's the verse I was referencing there. Thank you. I knew it was 139. Yeah. I might have said 138. Okay, 139. All right. Um, Violet says, I think I think you should plan that trip to Georgia. It sounds really amazing. It would be good experience for you and us. Yeah, the only thing I'm waiting for, I just, I, since I'm a full-time caretaker with my mother-in-law right now, Violet, I can't just up and go. So that's the, you know, the main thing. Um, so as soon as, you know, as soon as Hannah comes down, I'm heading home. But, um, you know, it might be easier to just fly down there. Uh, with these, you know, spirit flights, you can get round trip tickets for under $100. It's amazing. It's cheaper than the gas that it would take to drive down there. But they're still like six hours away from us where I am here. So, uh, but yeah, I definitely want to go down there. Haven't been down there since they moved into their new townhouse. Um, all right, let me see if... Um, Oh, thank you for your kind words, Crocheting with TLC. That's a cool name that you have, by the way. Um, yeah, definitely want to plan that trip. Uh, hope you're getting the technical difficulties worked out, Judy. We get that here every now and then. And, um, and Karen says, just chop, popped in for a short while before I go to work. Thanks for stopping in, Karen. I appreciate that. And... Um, and Kelly wants to know, is an Apple Watch compatible compatible with an LG Tribute phone? I have no idea, Kelly. You'd have to ask somebody who's more familiar with the LG stuff because um, everything I own is, is Apple. Uh, I've been an Apple kid before. It was literally before it was cool. I was using Apple products since um, 1989 in the office when I was working at an international relations department in downtown Washington, D.C. for a telecommunications company back when they had telex machines. Okay, showing my age again. Anybody, do you ever use it? Anyone ever use a telex machine? That's what I used to do. I used to use a lot of them. Um, that was before the internet. So, yeah, there is, there is life before the internet. Or it was about the time. Well, anyway, before it was, you know, readily available to everybody. Before everybody had a their own personal computer of some sort. Yeah. All right. Um, okay. Well, you know what? What else am I going to show? Oh, I have some more yarn I wanted to show you. Let me go ahead and keep my glasses on so I can read the fine print. I'm really excited about this yarn, you all. I need to roll it up. And it's, this is called, okay, this is by, let me get the label here. This is the Monticello Collection. It is by a, a company called Sestari Sheep and Wool Company. They are out of Churchville, Virginia. I have met this man many, many times. His name is Francis. I met him many times at um, conferences, at, at the Maryland Wool and Sheep Festival. And um, this yarn is really nice. It it's it's different. It's not like super cozy, but it I think it's gonna hold up. It's gonna be very excellent yarn. Uh, I just need to bring it home and wind it up. And um, let me tell you what it's made of. This is the yarn that's seventy five percent cotton and twenty five percent flax. So instead of wool and flax, like my shirt says, it's it's cotton and flax. Now the cotton 
was, I know, grown in Virginia. And the flax came from, from France. And they have their own mill and they milled these two together. And this is a number two, I believe. Let me look at it. It's a two. It's a fingering weight yarn. And I'm going to try to make a summer top out of this. I'm gonna have a new design designed with this. So I'm really looking forward. I think this is gonna be a really nice, breathable, uh, fun to wear shirt, tank or something. So I have a few of these. So I just, just wanna thank Sestari for, for sending this to me so I can give it a try. And let me show you, I also requested that they send me a color palette. These, these are all the colors that this yarn can come in. You know, really, really nice, kind of nice hues, I think, for the summer. They're, you know, somewhat, somewhat bold, some like the red can be you know, kind of bold, but yet, but you know, I think any of these could be really nice summery or even early fall colors. So looking forward to, you know, okay, and, and let me just read some of the directions here. It says machine wash cold on the gentle cycle, allowed to dry naturally on a flat surface, do not dry clean. Those are the instructions. Each of the hanks has 250 yards or 3.5 ounces. So, so yeah, very nice. So I'm looking forward to using that. And just if y'all wanna check out their website, um, it's right there. Or if you just Google Sestari Yarn Company or Sestari Sheep and Wool Company, you can get to their site. They have a lot of nice things. I'd like to go visit them. Um, they are having a festival. I don't know if any of you all are near Churchville, um, Virginia. It's kind of out in the country. It's really out in the country. Um, and it's beautiful out there. And they're having a festival. I think it is. I have to look up and see when the date. I'm trying to think. Is it June? June or July? I'd have to look it up, but they are having a festival at some point in the near future, in the months ahead, and I'm considering going. I'm thinking about getting a table and setting up there. They're gonna have um, just a lot going on. I think demonstrations and, and all sorts of things. So I'm really looking forward to that. They have a new store that they built there. It's very rustic looking, um, very much country, but they have like fleeces you could buy um, all sorts of things. Um, very, very nice gentleman and really believe in what he does there. So anyway, if you're interested in that, I, I will give you more reporting on, you know, how the yarn is. And I will give you, I promise, an honest opinion of it. Like I said, it's not super, super fuzzy, softy kind of yarn, because if you want something to wear well, you know, if you have something super elegant, uh, fluffy. I mean, you don't want something like that for the summer anyway. You want something that's going to, you know, handle, you know, being out in the sun and, and, and being worn, quite frankly. Um, all right. Lauren says, I like the idea of a color palette. <clears throat> Picking colorways is my downfall. Yeah, it's tricky, Lauren. It really is. Um, what you can always do is find something, find the picture where you like the, the composition of the picture and then just extract the colors from that. You know, it's some people may call that cheating, but I mean, just find something that really appeals to you and the colors that you like and put them together. And you'd be surprised that, you know, the things that can go together and, and you can pull off. It's really, really amazing. Um, okay, Lynn Underwood is the place where you subscribe. I'm not sure what you're asking for, but there should be a little button on the on the video there. Uh, you can just move the cursor around and you might come up with one, um, Lynn. I'm not sure what electronic device you're using. I know they can all vary. And Jake Parker says, I just finished your rectangular baby blanket pattern with the parfait yarn. Too bad they are discontinuing it. Oh, isn't that sweet yarn? That is... I'm glad you're able to get through that. That, Yeah, the parfait yarn is beautiful. It's very soft. It's like 100% like a polyester acrylic, but super soft, washes well. I've made so many baby blankets with that. Why they are discontinuing it baffles me. I have no idea. 
Um, hopefully the, it'll pop up as something else in the future. That does happen a lot. Um, thank you, Violet, for your well wishes with, um, with um, Hannah's grandmother. And Hannah, thank you so much for your kind words there. Um, let's see. Okay, Lauren says, I saw an idea where you wrap yarn colors around pegs, though, and thought it was a good idea, easier than digging yarns out each time. Hmm. Yeah, they, people do that sometimes if they're using a lot of color changes um, and you know about how much yarn you're going to need. That's very helpful so you don't have to keep piecing it all together. All right. Um, okay, I see what you mean. Uh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, a Barnett was asking about the Sestari. C-E-S-T-A-R-I. All right. Um Oh, thank you, Miss um, Condor. She says, please don't forget to hit the like button. Yeah, if you guys haven't subscribed already, please subscribe. Uh, I got a lot of new things. I usually come out with new videos on Monday. I usually post two, and this because one's left-handed and one's right-handed. I know that may bug people to get both in their feed. And let me put a plug in for the lefties. If you ever see a pattern that you want to do, but you don't see the left-handed version of it, take the name of that pattern Put it up in the um, search bar on YouTube and then just add left, left, L-E-F-T hyphen handed to the end of that and it will come up for you. I Everything I do has a left handed version on my site. You just have to find it um, and you can just use that search and if it doesn't come up, contact me and I will give it to you. I will send it to you. You can also check the playlist. I put a lot of left-handed things in a playlist like left-handed throws, left-handed scarves and hats, et cetera, et cetera. So you can find it there and you may actually find something even more fun than what you had initially searched for. You never know. So, and I think, I think, I think, let me check my list here. I think I may have gotten through just about everything that I had in mind. You know, I think I did. And um, let me see. Wow. Jake Parker says, I know I love the parfait yarn and the parfait layers. I've made at least 20 of your continuous granny square baby blanket with the parfait layers yarn. Wow. That's a lot. I, yeah, I've done about, I've done probably 10 of those just because I love seeing the colors come to pass. And it, it's, it is a fun blanket to do. And I can knock one out in an evening. It's, it's that easy to do. Um... All right, well, I there are some other questions here. Okay, Diana says, please let us know if you're going to Virginia. I'll take a road trip. Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, where, I wonder where you are, Diana. Are, are you, I, I get confused here where people are from. And it looks like I'm buffering. Okay, it looks like, okay, I'm buffering on my computer. Let me go ahead and I'm going to refresh the screen. I may lose some of your comments, but... Um, let me go ahead and I wanted to finish up with, with something, just a word of encouragement, if I can. Let me go ahead and do that. Okay, A. Barnett says, my, uh, my daughter is a lefty and has a hard time finding lefty tutorials worth watching. Thank you for being so thoughtful. My pleasure. I, I can't imagine what it's like being a left-handed person in a right-handed world. I... I can't imagine that. I just know that you all, um, okay, thank you, Hannah. I know that you guys are just a lot smarter than the rest of us righties. Uh, you have to be, or you would not survive it. But um, yeah, I try to do everything in a left-handed as well. Okay, thank you, Jake. He says, I'm not buffering. My Maybe it's just my internet here. Um, it, it's always kind of, kind of strange. Um, and left-handed all the way, <laughs> Jordan says. Um, yeah, if I go to, if I go to, back to Diana, if I go to Virginia, I'll definitely let you know. Uh, I'll try to let the whole world know. Okay. Diana says, I'm from Northeast Ohio. Oh, cool. Well, my folks are from, my parents were born and raised in Cincinnati. And I love going to your state of Ohio. Been back many times. Um, well, let me go ahead and end today because I know people have things to do and I probably should have ended 20 minutes ago. Um, I just was really encouraged by these verses this week, and I just wanted to share these with you. No commentary, just I'm going to read it straight up. This is from Romans 4, uh, Romans chapter 4, verses 7 and 8. 
And this describes me because of what Jesus did. Blessed are those whose lawless deeds are forgiven and whose sins are covered. Blessed is the man against whom the Lord will not count his sin. So I hope that encourages you today. And I look forward to seeing you guys on Friday. And then the plan is broadcasting from Gaithersburg, Maryland again. So God bless. Have a great week, everybody.